Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number 25 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is sacrifice. Our quote of the day comes to us from Napoleon Hill. Great achievement is usually born of great sacrifice and is never the result of selfishness. This episode of the No Quit Living Podcast is brought to you by the I3 Initiative. In today's society, it is so easy to get caught up in the drama, negativity, and uncertainty in the universe we are a part of. Against those challenges, we are committed to make the world a better place through improvement, impact, and integrity. You are invited to join our mission and learn more about our book club, membership, live events, and mastermind at i3initiative.com. That's the letter I, the number three, initiative.com. It is a pleasure for me to bring you today's episode. Many of our listeners may remember our guest as he is a former BMX legend. He has transitioned his career from a very successful professional athlete, and today he wears his entrepreneurial helmet. He also happens to be the host of a very successful podcast. It is my privilege to introduce Dennis Langlays. Dennis, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Well, hello. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Our number one objective is to both inspire and motivate our listeners to never quit. I wanted to ask if you could share a personal story about perseverance or perhaps a challenging time that tested you, but you kept on going and never quit. Well, Chris, I've, uh, I've had a lot of those in my life. Uh, being a professional athlete, uh, business owner, and now podcaster, it's like pick your poison, right? I guess I'll start off with my initial challenges as becoming an athlete. Um, obviously when you're diving into the world of being a professional athlete, you're trying to be better than most of the people in the world or, or be the best in the world. And there's absolute, uh, let's say, um, you have to give it all. You have to give everything you got. You have to alienate your friends. You have to alienate your family. In some cases you have to, um, push your physical ability beyond, um, everything possible to make that happen. Um, at at first, you know, once you gain your, your credibility, everything changes for that point, but there's, you're looking at every second, every moment of your life to become the best at something. Um, at least, at least I'm going to take that back. That's my approach that I took. Uh, If I went back and did it again, maybe I might do it a little different, but I literally sacrificed everything. Um, girlfriends, friends, um, good times, hanging out and doing social things for my career as a professional athlete. And if you're listening and you're not sure what it was, I was an extreme extreme sports athlete, a freestyle BMX bike rider that used to go ride around the world doing stunts on bicycles, basically. I was really uh, granted with this beautiful gift of being a professional, one of the top three in the world. Um, I got the opportunity to go around the world, Europe, South America, every single state in the United States and compete and perform for people around the world. but that came with a lot. That came with certainly a massive sacrifice uh, that I look back on now and go, "Wow, my body sure feels it." <laughs> As I speak about it here today, so yeah, it was a it was a very um, in depth uh, sacrifice that I've given to become that athlete. But the rewards from it, uh, literally thirty years later, are still there. And I don't think you do yourself. Uh, enough justice in regards to the success you had as a BMX rider. So for those that are not familiar with Dennis's story, just Google him and you will see uh, just to the level of success that he obtained. So I have a question for you a little bit, a little bit challenging here. What is harder, being an entrepreneur or being a BMX rider? Being a punch. Hmm. Well, let's see. Let me look at that from a uh, perspective here. <laughs> My eyes closed here. What was harder, being a professional athlete or being an entrepreneur? I'll have to say being an entrepreneur because I'm I'm molded for being an athlete. Um, I recently actually got back on my bike after over 10 years of not touching it. And just everything repeated on autopilot. Everything, every um, emotion, every physical pain, everything just kind of got re-enhanced, reprogrammed back to 10, 15 years ago. And it just came back like clockwork. I could get on a bike right now, no problem, do a 12-hour session and print and train and practice. It's just, it's inbred in me. Um, owning a business, 
uh, is certainly different because I sacrificed education. I sacrificed communication. I sacrificed, uh, I guess, in, in sports, you don't really have rules and regulations you have to kind of follow. There is less teamwork because you're, you're self-driven. So definitely a sacrifice in those areas. And, and to this day, uh, learning and relearning and learning and relearning some of that business structure. Some of the, like today alone, I'm, I was creating some, some copy for Facebook and, you know, there's misspellings, there's grammar issues everywhere where I see it to be perfect. Other people say, well, the, you know, it needs, it needs to be reworked. So, um, it's really difficult for me in that case because I totally have the ability to grow businesses. I've done it before. I've created, you know, six figure incomes in one month in business, but it's certainly difficult when you're starting to deal with grammar and spelling and these things that I sacrificed before to be a professional athlete. So I would have to say business has, has been diff- more difficult versus my athletic career. No, it's interesting the perspective you give, and I think for many people that do change careers at different points, and it might not be obviously being a professional athlete to an entrepreneur, but many people make a change of working for somebody and then transitioning to themselves. So I'm sure we all can talk about different sacrifices. I was curious, as being a professional former athlete yourself, what have you used, or is there one or two things very specific that you took from your prior world to being a successful entrepreneur today? Oh, that's that's a great question, Chris. I took everything. I took everything with me, uh, good or bad. It really uh, gave me the actually the ability to cheat, if you want to say, cheat my way to success because. When you're a professional athlete, you're literally training 10, 12 hours a day, and it's just clockwork. It's just you just this relentless, never giving up, right? And although I have all these flaws in business where I can't spell, I can't speak, I can't do this, I I don't care. You know what? Everybody else in the world cares about these these mishaps, but I'm like, the bottom line is, is people gonna love me, people gonna buy from me, and I just overcome these what people call crises in their lives. Like, oh my God, you can't post something that doesn't have that. Well, you know what? I didn't have the resources at the time to, to have some professional grammatical person come in there and do that. So I just would move forward. And it, if anything, it, it embraced who came to me versus scared people off. People think it's, well, you, you know, people aren't going to trust you. They're not going to believe that. That's not true. People see the energy in somebody and they, they gravitate toward that. They, they want that and they overlook these things. My essential, my business, I look back on it. I mean, some of the websites I used to have back in 2005, 6, 7, 8, they were awful. They, the, you know, the grammatical stuff on it was not so great, but I would sell, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sales because people believed in me and, and they could see it message. They could kind of read between the lines. And you're going to have those people that are going to read every line and they're not going to follow you. But that's, that's great because that separates you. You know, you don't want to have people following you that are just going to be, you know, bringing you down. You want people that are going to, they're believing in you and they believe in the product or believe in the service you have. And that just kind of helps you separate that. Right. So if you have some friends that you're hanging around with, you, you have some that kind of, you know, they'll drag you and there's other ones that embrace you. So I was actually posting about this today. Average, right? A lot of people want to choose to be average. They don't want any ruffled feathers. They don't want, they want to be politically correct in everything they say. But you're just never, you're never getting any emotion. You're never getting any progress out of that. So if you're, if you're willing to cross a line and be above average and be exciting, be relentless, there's, there's going to be a little more polarity between the two. And the greatest thing is, is people that love you, they will love you in every single condition. And the people that hate you, well, they go, they can go somewhere else. There's plenty of other people to go do business with. Now you bring up a very interesting perspective, and I think a lot of people want to be want to be great and a lot of people want to be average but it comes down to putting in the work and I don't think everybody understands just the work that is that is required to be great and obviously a lot of people choose to be average and I think you definitely took a lot of your successes from your BMX days into your entrepreneurial days and speaking of your podcast the five minute bark which I must say is not only a great podcast but you've had some really neat guests that deliver some powerful content I was curious what has been the biggest challenge for you when it comes to your podcast well, Chris, first off, I want to ask you which one, uh, which episode did you like the best that you listened to? The best. That's a that's a tough question. I was uh, it, the first one that comes to mind right now. You know, I, I can't honestly say it's one specific one. I'll tell you, I was listening to 
uh, your last three yesterday, just going through them in regards to today's interview. And the one thing that that kind of stood out was I was flipping through through the uh, last probably 20 or 30 uh, guests, just going through them as I do my preparation for my podcast. And there were some names that stood out and, and a lot of names personally, to be totally candid with you, didn't stand out as far as people that I knew. And that was the one interesting thing about your podcast that really stood out for me because I've seen a lot of people try to get big time guests and very famous guests on for different reasons. But it's funny, I found that some of the best podcasts that I listen to, both the, the ones that are ranked and the ones that aren't, is you flip through and you and you listen to a guest and all of a sudden you go through it and you're like, wow, I had no idea who that person was. And Michael O'Neill, who made the introduction for me to you, when I listened to you on his show, I knew a little bit about you prior, but I had no idea of your post BMX days. So, so again, I think the best part about being a fan of podcasts and obviously having my own podcast is you get a chance to connect with people that some you know and some you have no idea who they are. Right. I love interviewing people that have not had success before more than interviewing people that have success before. And here's why. The people that have lots of success, one, that generally they don't have as much time to share with you, although most of them lately have, have given me plenty of time, uh, more time than I would ever expect. But th- these people, it's for their first time they've been on a podcast or they're just getting out there and they're trying to get their message out there and you just kind of make them, uh, you create a superstar out of them. You you enhance them as a host. You know this. Your your job is to make Dennis say the best things he can possibly say and have him show up as, as, as much as you can. And to be able to just get that awesome information out of these people, help them share their message, help them say things they would never say before, um, the response, the tears, the emotions, the the, fe- the, the feedback they get on Facebook, it, it, it's you can't pay for that stuff. You know, you really can't. Now you got something like Russell Brunson. I interviewed him yesterday, uh, a couple days away, uh, last week. And amazing interview. I love it. Listened to it 50 times myself. Um, but he's not going to, you know, he doesn't have the capacity to share it. He's very busy. He's doing many podcasts and this and that. So it's kind of like you're getting a you're getting a favor, so to speak. He's going to be, he's coming on your podcast to share your, to take advantage of your crowd, but you're not going to get the feedback that you want. Uh, so there's, there's a give and take there. You're going to get these awesome guests that are superstars and it's kind of like, they're more or less doing you a favor. I believe is how I look at it. Like, thank you for letting me have that name now, that brand on my podcast, but it's only to benefit the kids, the kids or the people that come on that don't have a big name. So, I can put them alongside Russell Brunson, but those podcasts are for me personally are just the ones that I have I really get more out of. Uh, it's so exciting to see them just light up and say things that are so cool that you can I, you know I, as you know with mine I'm do video and audio so you know when I get them in, in state and they're sharing great things it's just a wow for me. It's just it's amazing. No, and you, you bring up a good point and and I think it's it's all about adding value and it's easy to have a, a podcast and have a you know well-known superstar athlete or entertainer that people know of and, and know of the story and not, not to take away from any of those people or those shows. But to your right. point, it's really neat when you can bring value and bring somebody out, whether that's their first or second podcast ever. And I think that's the really neat part when I listen to not, not just yours, but other podcasts out there. When I'm kind of going through it and listening, I say, wow, other than five minutes ago, I had no idea who this – Dennis guy was, or I had no idea who this Chris guy was. And all of a sudden you listen to their story. And, and, and that's the best part about podcasts. It's a free avenue to not only share different stories, but to interact with people. And then you can follow them on social media and get their email addresses or websites. And it's just, we talk about it at No Quit Living is everyone's familiar with six degrees of separation in today's day and age and with technology and where it is, especially through the podcast world, a lot of times you're only one degree away from connecting with somebody. And, and in essence, that's how you and I connected. It was via Michael O'Neill. We were one degree separated. Oh, yes. I love that conversation. Um, I talk about this all the time. I, I sell it. In fact, I create a course called manufacturing celebrity status that I offer. And in that, um, I've taken some of the, the trees, so to speak, the, the diagram, I diagrammed out. Okay. I met, for example, um, Michael O'Neill. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the story about this. Okay. So I'm a podcaster and I started out two and a half years ago 
And uh, obviously, um, Michael has got one of the most watched podcast, listened to podcasts out there. And I reached out to him, hey, I want to be on your podcast. And at the time, I was a nobody. I mean, of course, I made one big mistake, and I didn't let the world know that I was a professional athlete. I kind of left that to the side and said, I'm starting a new world, which was a big mistake. But I reached out to him. I got no answer. That was two, two and a half years ago. And recently, I, you know, I would see him out at different events. I'd kind of have a little chit chat with him here and there. And then finally, I got comfortable enough to say, hey, you know what, Michael, I'd love to have you on my podcast. Come on on the Five Minute Bark podcast and let's do something. It's a really great podcast. He said, you know what, sure, here's my phone number. So I come, I do the event with him. We record this awesome, amazing episode. And a friend of his reaches out to him and goes, Michael, do you know who Dennis Langlaise is? He goes, no. He goes, Dennis Langley. And he goes, Dennis Langley? The professional BMX rider? And so there was a complete shift in our relationship. Okay. Because here he is, is the professional podcaster that I look up to, right? But back when he was a kid, <clears throat> he admired me as a professional athlete. So now, literally, we don't go a day without chatting on the phone or texting or meeting up for lunch or riding our bikes. We've become instantly best friends. So that's a very, very, just a beginning start of that. So now, of course, he's re recommended me to you. Um, he's recommended me to others. I've recommended him in the, the, you know, in the BMX world. He's wanted to interview top level BMXers. I know them all, you know, I know all the, the Michael Jordans of freestyle. I know all the people that are, they're famous. So they're just, you know, a text away or a call or, you know, I can call up, make fun of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he's get he's getting to meet all these people. He's getting to go to their houses. He's getting to buy their products. And he's just like a kid in a candy store, you know? So it, you, you never know. You're right. You're one degree off from meeting the next person. And I really try to teach people that if you are aware every single day, there's an opportunity in front of you. Regardless, it's always there. There's something you want right now in your brain. It's a promise and a guarantee that something out there is in front of you that's going to make that happen. You just got to have your eyes and ears open to it. Um, and that's literally, I mean, I love what you're saying there. It's just, it's, it, it can happen every single day. Some sort of, I went to a co coffee at Starbucks. I listened to somebody, I was looking and listening and I heard this person um, mentioning some subjects and all of a sudden we became friends and they're on my podcast and they referred me to this person. So it, you can really take these things now and you can map them out and see how far they go down. And Michael's, you know, I've had a relationship with Michael for less than a month or month, maybe, maybe a month. And, you know, we've had connections of four or five different people just within that one month. And that's going to continue to grow. Uh, and same with other guests I've had on my show. I mean, they've just, they've broken all the way down the ladder to as far as, you know, meeting Russell Brunson's through, through different things like that happened. I happened to when, not, I'm not sure if I'm taking all your time up here, but when I was a, when I was a professional athlete, I, I was hired to train this guy named Tom Beal and he'd be a great guest by the way for your show. He's amazing. Tom Beal, B E A L amazing human being. So I trained him as a professional bike rider. His mom hired me to go out to Connecticut or New York and train him. And so we became friends back then. 25 years later, we, he, he, uh, on Twitter, he reaches out to me. He says, hey, what's going on? So it turns out now we're in the same industry. He went to college with um, Russell Brunson. <laughs> so here I am getting a per personal invitation to Funnel Hacker Live uh, because of my relationship 25 years ago. Um, and then obviously at Funnel Hacker Live, I met a number of different people that came on my show. Alex Sharfin, Sean Stevenson, um, all these different people that now I have in my Rolodex that I can call, text, or ask, or um, have on my show. You know, it's amazing how, how many times in life things come back tenfold, and, and <laughs> working with someone 20 years later, the ability to connect via Twitter. And that's one of the things I mentioned a couple minutes before, is in, with today's technological advances, you are only one degree away from somebody if you really want to make the effort. And it's not going to be easy, and it doesn't happen within seconds, but via Google, via Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. There's so many ways to get in contact with someone. And, and the other component I must say too is, is it also depends on how you do it. There's the right way, the professional way, and then there's the what I call the stalkerish way to do it. So you've obviously mastered mastered that and, and you, can, you already gave two or three examples just of way people now have been friends of yours and been guests on your podcast and you've been guests on theirs. So it definitely comes, comes full circle in many ways. It's all, it all goes back to the name of your podcast. Don't quit. You know, don't quit. Don't give in. Don't 
stop because you think that you're not good enough to talk to those people. Each and every one of us have a special expert gift, right? Christopher, yours is podcasting. You're an amazing podcast host, okay? Dennis Langlais, you've been a professional athlete or thing. So you'll somehow grab some sort of subject that you can share with these people. And if you've done enough research on them, you may find out they eat the same kind of candy bar you do. Oh, my God, you know, I, I love three, I love Snickers. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. You do too? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man, I carry one around with me. You know, and so the stupidest thing like that could create a relationship with Tony Robbins, you know, um, because – if you're going up to him and praising him, oh, you're amazing, you're great, you changed my life. He doesn't want to hear that. He hears that every day. But if you talk about Snickers and he loves Snickers, man, you got you got a an in right there. So it's it's creating that authentic relationship with people that you can have your own conversation, your own personal conversation with that people that'll help you get that alignment, right? <clears throat> it doesn't go. You don't necessarily. Yeah, you don't necessarily go in for the kill right away. Hey, come you on my podcast? No, hey. This is my name is Dennis Langley and I own the Five Minute Bark Podcast. But you're Tony Robbins. That's great. I love Snickers. You love Snickers too. I saw that in a post. Yeah, you know, I, Dennis. It's funny because I carry him around with me everywhere I go. I'm, I'm not saying he likes Snickers, but I'm just saying as an example, um, something like that would would connect you with Tony Robbins. You, br- you bring up something that I think is is important to touch on. It's authentic relationship, and I believe people see through the fakeness. And and if you reach out to somebody, whether it's a handwritten note, a phone call, a text, an email. A, tw- a tweet, whatever it is, people read through the fake people. And if you make an authentic effort, and sometimes you have to make two or three or four, like you mentioned, the title of our podcast is No Quitting. It's not going to take one comment or one email always. Sometimes it will, but it's all about creating that authentic conversation or that authentic con- connection, which would lead to that authentic relationship. And as you mentioned, just a gentleman you talked about 20 years later reconnecting to you via Twitter, it's all about being authentic. And I think sometimes people, I don't know if they forget that, but sometimes people, I guess, fast forward through it and they think that you can make an authentic connection within seconds. Now, sometimes you may, but the reality is you got to find out a little bit about someone. And to use your analogy about the Snickers piece, that could be something significant that let's say Tony Robbins is a big fan of Snickers, that if you make that sincere connection, it might lead to him being on your show or might lead to a business opportunity or personal professional opportunity down the road. It all ends in money, right? I guess, you know, <laughs> unfortunately it has to, to sell people or to get people to talk to you or listen to your podcast. It has to end in dollars and cents and, and listeners. Yes. All this can end up in dollars and cents. If you lead it that way, it can eventually go there and, and, and it can go there auto on autopilot. You don't have to kind of jam it down the subject, jam it down the throat. You don't have to go instantly go into it to try to negotiate business alignments. It's it just, when people feel com- with you, comfortable with you, everything else will align and the business opportunity will come. Now, it, you, your main goal will be like, oh my God, I, someday I want to do business with Tony Robbins. I want to do a million dollars. You know, I want, I want, I want, I want that. Well, you may end up making a million dollars and you may end up meeting Tony Robbins, but you also may end up meeting Tony Robbins' partner over here on the side who makes you $2 million. So, the results are still there. It may be not be the exact path that you chose, but the the connection between you, Tony Robbins, and the people in between there that introduced you to Tony, and then Tony introducing you to somebody else, you still end up with the same result, right? No, no, I, I could not agree more. And I and I wonder if there's a way we could look back at how many people have maybe turned off Tony Robbins' partner or someone else because they were only looking at Tony Robbins, for example. And I think you need Bingo. to be careful. You need to be careful because one person could lead to your next. And it's not only about the money piece. It's not only about the business. It could be personal, professional. It could be meeting the spouse of your dreams, or it could be just meeting somebody that has the opportunity to to mentor you. Bob Berg, who was the first guest on our podcast many months ago now, he talked about a topic of mentoring. And he said, there might be people that just come into your life and mentor you for a very short period of time, but there also might be people that mentor you for a long period of time. And I'm always curious just to always question people that how many times have they turned off something that could be a significant opportunity for them just because they were thinking of something else and being so single-minded as opposed to being open-minded. Christopher, I got a great story on that. Um, So I I also had had an agency where I did websites and I had a client of mine who was a good friend of mine, actually used to work for me in my, one of my businesses and I was there helping him do a grand opening. And in 2016, or is it no 2015? I'm not sure. One of those years, too. That's going by so fast. 2015 or 16, 
I made this commitment to myself that I was going to be this person that pays attention much more than usual. Now, running businesses and starting businesses and all these things, they're, they're a big distraction. And you start running around and multitasking and just not giving everything a f- efficient attention. So I was at this event and I was there with some cameras and some lights and running around trying to catch the moments and do these different things. And this one gentleman was trying to reach out to me and talk to me. And I was blowing him off. And I caught myself. I caught myself doing what I didn't want to do. I stopped and I made the time to talk to this gentleman. This gentleman's on my podcast. His name is Lee Stein. You can Google him as well. Turns out he's done a TED Talk. He invented the process of email as we use it today. He owned the technical rights to payment gateway. So any kind of payment online, whether it's Stripe or anything like that, he owned the technology that associates the payments. I'm, I'm not for the exact details of the whole, whatever it is, but so here you are, you got this guy that's been on Ted talk, this, that, and I, I could have left that opportunity on the table by being too busy and not being aware of what was around me. Not only that, he became a very close friend. Um, and again, if you Google him, he's, he's saving the, the forests in Costa Rica. He's, um, out changing the world with micro biome, biome, um, doing some amazing things. And I can text this guy or call this guy and, there's more chances he'll answer the phone or respond to my text than before. He knows, you know, Barack Obama personally, you know, you know, he's, you know, obviously very exclusive, very wealthy. And I met him in that kind of situation you're explaining, Christopher. So if your listeners are out there and you're, you're, you know, you're catching on to what Chris and I are creating here today, you're leaving opportunity. This may even just happen to you guys today. You might be leaving an opportunity out there that you never knew could even exist or even possible. I couldn't manifest or plan out like, hey, today I want to go meet this guy that invented email. <laughs> and it's been on TED Talk and he's changing the world and he's saving millions of trees in Costa Rica. You couldn't list that out, you know what I mean, and, and make that happen. It'd take you months and months and months of trying to, you know, call them, email them, try to get through the, the chains of people to get to them. And here it is. It just was in my lap, on my lap. That's a great story. And, and, and just Isn't back, it? It's a great story. Back to my point a, um, a couple minutes ago is I wonder how many people have turned off certain opportunities and not because they're trying to big time somebody or you could be busy, could be not in the mood, but I just, I can't take enough from, from that story is just be open. And, and my father taught me something is, is you can always learn from people and you always take a five or 10 minute conversation. That doesn't mean you give somebody 10 hours of your time, but you never know where one simple conversation could lead to. And again, this, this meeting with Lee Stein, you had no idea who he was and, and who his circle was, but because you were open and you caught yourself, obviously he's now been a, a podcast, excuse me, he's been a guest on your podcast and there was no chance he would have been if you had blown him off. Yep. You know, Christopher, I had the option to say yes to this interview or I had the option to say no. And I also have the option to answer, start this interview and just be average, or I can come on here and participate with you at the fullest levels. Both you and I are going to see something happen from this interview. Something's going to happen. Somebody's going to shift. Something's going to somebody's going to reach out. Somebody's going to go, "Wow, Christopher, you're just great at this. I want to be on your show." Or something's going to happen for me or you in this relationship because we are putting our full and we're we're putting our full attention. We're going above average here today in this situation. I'm listening to you. You're listening to me, and and things are going to happen. So if you're listening. Watch. Maybe Chris will post some comments here in the future in the next week or two of, of something that's come into our, our environment, our lives because of this communication. It was an option. I could say yes or I could say no. Chris had the option of saying yes or no. I don't, I don't know this Dennis guy that well. I have him on a show. I hope I'm being a great guest for you. I don't know. That's your, your determination. But um, I know I just came here to, to, to do the best I could possibly do for you, right? So, um, and again, it all goes back to um, what this podcast is all about. No, I, I appreciate that, and I will uh, I will send that check out to you, as I mentioned, for that plug. So thank you for, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. For that. Yeah. Well, here, we're not going to quit, right? Yeah, we're, we're not going to no. quit. This, we're, we're creating a no-quit episode here. It's a no-quit environment. So here's, here's an interesting question for you. If you could go back and give the 20-year-old Dennis version one piece of advice, what would it be? I got that answer. That would be that when you are traveling the world as a professional, a famous celebrity, that you would capture that moment as a celebrity. I did not, um, because I had mentioned earlier, I was so hardcore. I was so relentless to be the best in the world and ride my bike and, and just be part of that. I left out the celebrity part. I was, while I was doing that, I was interviewing, I was 
signing autographs for hours and hours on end. I had people reaching out to me and I didn't care about that. Not that I didn't care about those people, but I cared about riding my bike and doing the things I want to do. Uh, you see the, those similar things in Tiger Woods. He wanted to be the best golfer. He didn't have as much time to sign autographs as Phil Nicholson and all the other guys out there, but he was the best. And that's what he's, his, his goal in life was to do. Um, I should have captured more celebrity. I should have taken advantage of the monetary. I didn't understand the monetary value of, of celebrity back then. Now I can still tap into a little of that now, but back then I, I would say I've left millions of dollars on the table because I didn't capture those moments. There were people around me that were not even half as good as me and talented as me that did take advantage of those. They got in the magazines, they took the news spots, they, they did all these different things that involve going on podcasts and going on TV shows and all these different things. And they did make millions. So if there's a message out there I could give for that as well as yes, uh, if you're aiming to be good at something, there's what's called the long-term IRA <laughs> in your, your create, your creative celebrity that you create. So if you're great at something and you, the world knows it, you got to understand that if you pay attention to the, the celebrity part of it, it will, it'll surpass your career as a bike rider. Again, this is 20, 30 years later. I am still talking about it on this podcast. I have people still reaching out to me. I have a separate Facebook just for that where people reach out. Um, I get opportunities to fly around the country and speak or share or do things because of it. And this is, a, I'm so removed from it. I, I just touched my bike for 10 years the first time recently and I still have opportunity with it. No, and I'm, and so I'm, a, I'm, I'm glad you shared that because I think a lot of people, both celebrities and non-celebrities, can take advantage of different things, especially as you mentioned, it's capture the moments. And, and that could be monetarily for somebody. That could be career-wise, could be relationship-wise. But I think a lot of people don't always take advantage and don't always live in the moment. So I, I think I would just take take that away as well from what you said. And I, I appreciate you sharing that story. And I think probably the reality is is you're taking advantage of na- of things now in the entrepreneurial world, just as I asked a couple questions ago, is, is you took all of your experiences as a BMX rider and they had an impact on you positive negative good bad and you're now in a different place and and I can't tell you what you're going to get back now but I, but I can definitely tell you from just knowing you this short period of time is you definitely are taking advantage of opportunities and just with your podcast alone and some of the guests you've had you're clearly making a name for yourself and you are going to have that opportunity that hopefully knock on wood for you will take care of all those those millions that you lost and and it's exciting to to uh, listen and, and and learn a little bit from you today during the podcast so thank you for sharing uh, some of that stories now here's a question a little bit out of the norm if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive who would it be and why Hmm, that's a good question. I never really thought about that one. Dana, I guess it would have to be Tiger Woods. Yeah, I'm a golf. I'm a golf fanatic. I'm a really good golfer. I love golf. If I could be golfing right now, it would be. Uh, it would be Tiger Woods and maybe even have dinner with him and talk about uh, some of the similar things you and I are talking about right here. You know, the the dedication, uh, the cost. He's he's obviously had similar situations where he's left uh, probably billions on the table versus millions because of some situations in his life where he's made decisions that have changed the course of his life. Uh, some that even cost him, uh, holding the records, you know, holding records that we're all hoping he would have made. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but it's pretty much looks that way. Um, so I'd love to have a conversation with him and have dinner with him. And actually I've been to his restaurant in uh, Florida, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, Ben, we have a place down in, in Jupiter, Florida. So, uh, been there as well. I think, uh, he definitely has some, some great stories, and I think people sometimes now are looking at some of the negative things, but they, they forget all the amazing things that he accomplished on, on the golf course, and I think he would be an interesting interesting person to speak to from many different perspectives, both professionally, financially, yeah. and just kind of you know asking him some questions, maybe outside of the traditional questions that he, that he gets asked all the time. Yeah, it's, it, it is a really, a, you know, uh, some, one of the golfers spoke out recently on that subject is, you know, he's done so much great things and a little thing, you know, that happens daily in our lives, like a DUI, not that they're great or anything by any means. And I guess he wasn't drinking anyway, but he was just on drugs um, for some reason. I don't know what it is, but bottom line is, is, you know, these things happen in everybody else's life and, and you know, it surely makes a dent. But when they, when he does it, they turn it into this world, the world just cracked in half. Um, so it's, I really feel bad, you know, everybody's broken up with girlfriends, everybody's gotten fights with, with somebody somewhere along the line, but with, when, with, with him, it cost him millions. Um, and it's really too bad that that's kind of how the media treats people. Um, you know, they, 
love to bring out the live light of that so they can make money on it. So they, it's, it's really sad. I mean, to t- turn something that's, you know, an accident, we're, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. But when he's imperfect, you know, they it gets, just it gets magnified times, him. times a billion, right? Yeah. It's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. Well, listen, before we let you go, I wanted to ask if you had any parting words you'd like to share with our listeners. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I'm really excited about the the direction of the Five Minute Bark podcast. It's really exciting. It's um, almost as good as yours, <laughs> and uh, and I really enjoy being on your show. Honestly, this is really great. You're a great host, and um, but yeah, I, I, you know, my my mission now is I, I it's kind of been come to me that I really want to help people um, share. I want to share secrets that I've learned from my guests. You know, I'm sure you share them as well to help people communicate more effectively, um, and become celebrity. I've made the mistakes of being a celebrity and not cashing in on it and, and made some different stakes. So I, I've created a, um, a new course that I've created that people can elect to, um, enroll in with me. In fact, nowadays, as it's in the infantry in beta, I'm actually doing the, the one-to-one with the people as well. So I've been sharing, you know, my experience as a, a professional athlete, my experience as a podcast to help the guests that come on my show shine in different ways. And, and in turn, become celebrity, become uh, more effective in their income because now they've created this new dynamic of expert and they can charge more. So I've been really excited to be working on this new program. No, it's awesome. And, and I, as I mentioned before, is I would highly recommend for our listeners, if you have not listened to the 5-Minute Bark podcast, definitely check out a couple episodes. And one of the things I tell people to do is similar to to maybe mu- music and musicians is don't just listen to one one episode or one podcast or one song because you never know you might connect with with somebody else and and I would always recommend people is take take a listen to one or two episodes so I definitely recommend the 5 minute bark podcast for our listeners and last question Dennis and I promise it's an easy one what is the best way for our listeners to connect with you or to follow Oh great that's easy right So yeah they can go to 5minutebark.com that's f i v e minutebark.com and you can also reach out to me at Facebook it's Dennis Langley and that's L A N G L A I S as in Sam um, on Facebook message me if you have any questions you want to hear more about me or you can reach us on obviously iTunes 5 minute bark podcast there and my podcast is in video as well so we also do what's called the trailer uh, video where it's a 2 or 3 minute version of the podcast and uh, it's a full audio so if you want to see in full audio we have that on there as well so that's how they can reach me. Well, listen, Dennis, I cannot thank you enough for your insight. It was an honor and a pleasure having you as a guest, and I look forward to hopefully speaking with you soon. Awesome. Thank you, Chris, for having me on the show. This is amazing. To sum up today's episode and our theme of the day, sacrifice, Dennis truly delivered some valuable information. As a former professional athlete and one of the top BMX riders ever, Dennis knows the true meaning of sacrifice. He spoke about the friends, girlfriends, family, and numerous personal sacrifices he had to make to be one of the best. Later in the show, we discussed what it means to really sacrifice and why so many people are okay with just being average. Dennis shared some great personal stories about making things happen and how every single day we all have the opportunity to make something great happen. We just need to have our eyes and our ears open. He also stressed the importance of being open to both opportunities as well as new people. He shared one terrific story about a gentleman named Lee that turned out to have a huge impact on Dennis, but because he wasn't fully open, he almost missed out on that opportunity. In closing, we never know where our next big opportunity may come, nor if that next person you meet could possibly change your life. Regardless, if you are not willing, you just might miss out on that life-changing opportunity or relationship. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we hope that Dennis inspired you and motivated you to go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.